Hi, folks. This is Mark by Mark A. Foster, Ph.D. for the Institute for Dialectical Metarealism. Let's get rolling. I wanted to discuss the subject of covenant breaking, but perhaps in a somewhat novel way, at least novel for me. Uh, whether it is novel for you, you can be the judge of that. I know for a long time there have been concerns expressed, including by me, to be honest, about what will happen in the world order of Baha'u'llah in the Golden Age, the most great peace, in a time when there will be a global government, a successor, in a sense, to the type of global government which will exist during the lesser peace, but based more specifically upon Baha'i foundations and upon Baha'i law, upon Baha'i Sharia. What will happen to covenant breakers? What will happen to them? Right now, whether you know or not, it is not permissible in general for members of the Baha'i faith to associate, um, to have friends, in other words, who are covenant breakers. Now, there are exceptions to the association principle. For example, there was a time not that long ago when I was very much involved in coordinating a lot of Baha'i activities online. Two of the things I did were running the Baha'i Forum on AOL, America Online, for those of you old enough to know what that is, and running the Baha'i section on CompuServe. On America Online, or AOL, there were people there who would be called by Baha'is covenant breakers. What that means is that they have in some way attempted to create a sect, a schism, or a fraction within the Baha'i community. They have been disobedient to the center of the faith, but in a very profound way. And as a result of it, they have not only been cast out of the Baha'i faith, which has happened to some people, and many of them were not covenant breakers, but they are also regarded as having, to use the biblical term, blasphemed against the Holy Spirit, meaning they have committed the unforgivable sin. For as long as they are covenant breakers, that sin will prevent them from progressing. Now, is it possible for covenant breakers to repent? to come back into the Baha'i faith? Yes. Sadly, as the Baha'i teachings say, most of them, unfortunately, do not want to do so. And I wish it were another way. But on America Online, we had members of different quote-unquote covenant breaker groups that had their own sections on the forum. There were some Baha'is who were not happy with that. And so I had to, to make peace. I had to make sure I was not taking sides. Um, I was not there as a representative of the Baha'i community. I was there as a volunteer for America Online or AOL. And so from that perspective, and the Universal House of Justice agreed with me, the supreme governing body of the Baha'i community, 
they had a right to be there. But many Baha'is, regardless, either they did not know that or they didn't care. And they tried what, in whatever way they could to get these people kicked off of AOL. And so I became their protector. I became the protector of these quote unquote covenant breakers. Uh, and they all loved me for it. I would get virtual cards in the mail, email, because of uh, what I did. They all appreciated that. And I let them know that I was grateful for their appreciation. I did not get into any theological or doctrinal conversations with them in obedience to the Universal House of Justice. I mean, I wouldn't anyway, but they never asked me to, meaning these people in these groups never tried to engage me theologically. Uh, they had their own discussions. They did not bother the Baha'is. They had their own problems to work out. Um, I read their postings. I read the postings of the Baha'is. That was my job as the Baha'i Forum Manager on AOL. What will happen in the future if there are people like that, people that Baha'is call covenant breakers in the most great peace, in the world order of Baha'u'llah, what will happen? Will these people be deprived of their human rights. Now, human rights are a very strong component of the Baha'i teachings. Everyone is entitled to human rights, and Baha'is are not permitted to deprive covenant breakers of their human rights. The master, Abdul Baha, was in one case very annoyed with this one Baha'i who had done precisely that, this Baha'i thought that Abdu'l Baha would be pleased. Abdu'l Baha was anything but pleased. And I assume that this person was shocked and surprised. But hopefully he learned his lesson that it was not his job to discriminate against people. He was not an administrative body. His job was to not associate with them, not to socialize with them, not to have theological discussions with them. But if a member of that group worked with that person, was in that person's company, was a member of that person's team, that Baha'i had an obligation to associate with that person for business purposes. Okay, so... What will happen in the future? What will happen in the future? Will there be kind of an, of an untouchable caste of covenant breakers, people who are not accorded the same rights, people who cannot associate freely with Baha'is in the same way as Baha'is can? That always struck me as being somewhat of a quandary until I began praying about it, until I began asking the beloved black-eyed maiden of white light, Horia, about it. And then I woke up, and for better or worse, I had an insight as to what I think might happen. Now, do I know? Of course not. So anything that I'm saying now is pure speculation on my part. Please do not take it seriously. Um, realize that I am simply an individual Baha'i. I have no uh, authority to interpret the Baha'i teachings. I have no ability to interpret the Baha'i teachings that are is any gives me any level of uh, assurance that what I say is true. I am not even sure that what I say is true for myself. And I think it should be that way. 
I should always be in a state of doubting, doubting myself, doubting my own ability to understand things, being skeptical about my own personal points of view regarding the Baha'i faith. But with that in mind, with those qualifications, here is what I think. Maybe it's wrong, but this is what I've come to. This is the insight I was given, I think, when I woke up from sleeping uh, that one morning several months ago. Here's what I think. Baha'is, right now, are relatively immature. Maybe relatively could be taken out in some cases. Baha'is are, are children of the half-light, the generation of the half-light right now. We have not come into our full capacities by any stretch of the imagination. And so we might be easily swayed by covenant breakers. The contamination, in a sense, of the views of covenant breakers might affect Baha'is right now. And Baha'is might, if they associated with those people, adopt the views of those covenant breakers and reject the views of Baha'is. I mean, there have been many cases where a person in a family broke the Baha'i covenant and the other members of the family either left or kicked that person out. That was the end of it. I do not know if that will necessarily be true in the future. My feeling, and it is only a feeling, it is only a hunch, is that at some point, we will become stronger. Our capacities will increase substantially. Our ability to withstand the pressure, the onslaught of covenant breaking will increase. And we will no longer have the same level of susceptibility to their ideas as we might right now. And so at that point, Perhaps, and again, perhaps, 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 I don't know. At that point, perhaps, the restriction on associating with these covenant breakers might be removed. That seems to me to be a reasonable way that the problem could be resolved. And it makes sense that Baha'is will continue to become more educated, more spiritually evolved, and better able to deal with stress, anxiety, and tests as the years, as the centuries go on. And that whenever the most great peace arrives, and it may not be for a very long time, maybe centuries maybe even millennia from now. But whenever that happens, Baha'is will hopefully be in a much different place than Baha'is are right now and able to interact with covenant breakers without falling into the possibility of becoming covenant breakers themselves, meaning even able to have discussions even able to have doctrinal discussions with people without falling into covenant breaking. Now, I doubt personally that there will be that many of them, but we, of course, have no way of knowing. Baha'u'llah says that the time will come when every man will profess himself a believer, but there is a kind of uh, hyperbole in Arabic and Persian, and so every man might mean most men or most people, whatever. Whatever it means, I don't know. But I'm sure there will be some people at 
some point in time who may have different views. And perhaps in the future, in the golden age, during the most great peace, there may still be some covenant breakers. And it may not be necessary at that point for Baha'is to avoid all forms of association with them. Again, I have no way of knowing if what I said is true. What I said may be bunk. It may be hogwash or any other word you want to make up for it. It may be a product entirely of my imagination. Abdu'l-Bahá said it is virtually impossible in many cases to distinguish inspiration from imagination that the heart can easily lead a person astray. You may think that something is inspiration, but in reality, it is simply something that you imagined. And so it is quite possible, I would say very possible, that what I am saying right now is not true. But at least I've said it. And I think it is important that I did say it for one important reason. At least for me, it gives me hope that the civil rights of covenant breakers, the human rights more broadly of covenant breakers, will not be impeded under the world order of Baha'u'llah. Now, there may be other explanations too, Perhaps you can think of those yourself. If you do, I would welcome you to make a response video to this one, to put a link under the comment section to that video so I can watch it. And if you like, I will respond to your response video as well. For the time being, this has been Mark by Mark A. Foster, Ph.D., for the Institute for Dialectical Metarealism. Have a pleasant day and an even better day tomorrow.